Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 26th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Norbert Monicani. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today our readings call us to repentance. Oftentimes we fail to realize that our need for repentance, and we think it is for other people to repent. For those times that we have failed to respond to this call, let us ask God for pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and lead us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, our God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power, above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises as to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You say, The way of the Lord is not just. Hear now, O house of Israel, Is my way not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity, he shall die for it, for the iniquity which he has committed, he shall die. Again, when a wicked man turns away from the wickedness he has committed and does what is lawful and right, he shall save his life. Because he considered and turned away from all the transgressions which he had committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remember your compassion, O Lord. Remember your compassion, O Lord. O Lord, make me know your ways. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. 
for you are the God of my salvation. I have hoped in you all day long. Remember, Remember your, your compassion, your compassion Lord. O Lord. Remember your compassion, O Lord, and your merciful love, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. In your merciful love, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Remember, remember your compassion, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. He shows the way to sinners. He guides the humble in right judgment. To the humble, he teaches his way. Remember your compassion, O Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any incentive of love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfishness or conceit, but in humility count others better than yourselves. Let each of you look not only on his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which was in Christ Jesus, who, through, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord, and I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, What do you think? A man had two sons, and he went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But afterward, he repented and went. And he went to the second and said the same, and he answered, I go, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, the tax collectors and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the harlots believed him. And even when you saw it, you did not afterward repent and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
our first reading today makes clear that God's mercy is always available, but we must accept it. Just as we can never count ourselves as justified in God's mercy and in God's eyes, conversion is an everyday exercise. It is never too late to be converted. However, when the righteous commit evil, the result is death. But whenever a sinner repents, the result is life. St. Paul tells us in the second reading that one way of showing that we are alive is by loving as Christ did. When we worship together, we become aware of God's mercy, united in love and purpose. What St. Ignatius of Loyola would call union of minds and hearts. Since Christ is our life, instead of competing for God's bountiful mercy, we invite everybody, we invite others to share with us the beauty of that kingdom. I remember growing up, I had an aunt, may I so rest in peace. She used to wait at Mass at the moment when people would be going for communion, as they queue for communion, she would be waiting. And if she had known that you did something in the week, which she considered to be something unacceptable or that makes you unworthy to receive Christ, she would gently pull you off from the crowd, from the queue. But the interesting part about her is she never had peace with many people in the locality where she used to live. So she was more of judging other people and judging other people unworthy to receive Christ. Yet each time when she would do that, she would be at the very end of the queue to go and receive Christ. As I was reflecting on today's gospel, that's the image that kept coming to me. In today's gospel, it is rather shocking that Jesus says, Amen, amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes will enter the kingdom of God before you. Notice to whom Jesus was speaking to the chief priests, and the elders of the people. The unrepentant religious leaders who objected to John's, John Baptist's teaching are the ones to whom Jesus was, was addressing. Aren't they the ones to determine who are the chosen? Is God's mercy to be held out to everyone? After all, they know all the right ways to address God. What makes it even worse and shocking is that Jesus was talking about text, text collectors and prostitutes, the castaway of the society, the unrespectable people who listened to the message and repented. We can think of Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector. We can think of Matthew, one of the twelve apostles. We can also think of a woman caught in adultery and everyone wanted to stone her to death. These two repented and received forgiveness from the Lord. Actions speak to God louder than words. Jesus insists. So in the parable, Jesus says the tax collectors and the prostitutes were like the first son who at first said no to his father, but then thought better and obeyed his father's will and worked in the vineyard. They had lived a life of disobedience to God's will in the past, but when they heard the preaching of Jesus, they converted. Like the first son, they said no at first, but later said yes. 
The chief priests, on the other hand, and the elders of the people were like the second son in Jesus' parable, who said, yes, sir, we will go and do the work, but did not obey the father. They heard the preaching of Jesus and knew the scriptures, but their hearts were closed and they were not responding to God. They were like the second son who said yes, but in fact did not obey God's will. What counts is doing God's will, not empty promises. Why were text collectors and sinners able to open their hearts and respond to the preaching of Jesus, while the chief priests and the elders of the people were not? It is because these sinners realized their need. They realized that their lives were empty and meaningless. For that, they received respect from Jesus, which they did not receive from their society. Jesus offered hope to the tax collectors and the prostitutes and the sinners. Hope which they never had. When they converted, they became alive. As the prophet Ezekiel says in our first reading, if a wicked man, turning from the wickedness, he has committed, does what is right and just. He shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins which he committed, he shall surely live and shall never die. Most of us Christians are walking dead. We lack the profound personal experience of Jesus Christ. We have become too comfortable to think that the kingdom of God belongs to us. We have lost that personal relationship with Christ. We do not know Jesus. We only know about Jesus. We are professional Christians. If we know about Jesus, while well, those we see as sinners have converted and know Jesus personally, they surely can say, as Jesus says to us today, are making their way into the kingdom of God before us. The whole point in today's beautiful readings is that we cannot do with our own strength. We can do by turning to Christ. That's what the prostitutes and the tax collectors discovered. And they were able to repent and change the direction of their lives. That's what the first son in the parable discovered. He repented from his selfishness and found strength to fulfill his duties. That's what the first reading teaches us so clearly. If we turn away from our own sins and turn towards Christ, we shall truly live. Let us pray today for the grace of repentance so that our yes to the Lord will be sincere and coming from deep within. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With confidence in the unlimited generosity of our loving God, let us now bring our prayers to God and all our petitions. For Pope Francis and all the leaders of our faith communities, that their yes to the Lord will encourage and inspire us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our loved ones who are struggling with following Christ, saying yes to the Lord, that they will have the change of mind and heart and declare themselves for Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For an end to the COVID-19 pandemic, that all people tend to the needs of the poor and vulnerable, especially refugees and those without electricity, running water, or adequate shelter. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For voluntary workers, that people who freely choose to use their time for the good of others are supported in their work and find the peace of Christ through it. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. us. For an integral ecology, that as families we discuss and recognize the effect our way of living has on our planet, and that as families we talk about how we might understand and support the well-being and interconnectedness of all life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the sick, that all who are sick, those in hospital and those who are housebound, we remember especially the sick of our own parishes and families wherever they may be. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the faithful departed, that all those who have died through sickness, accident, or violence may find the fullness of life in Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Merciful God, we seek your way, the way of mercy, steadfast love, and service to our neighbors in need. We do so simply and sincerely, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and for the of God's church. 
grant us all merciful God that this our offering may find acceptance with you and that through it the wellspring of all being may be laid before before us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these sacred mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he gave the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with the Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, your spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, Booty and Duncan our bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, 
gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, when you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. For in peace our Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Mm.